So in past videos, people were giving out about the audio quality from this camera. This fella looks fairly queer, might be a bit overkill, but hopefully now that'll be the answer to our problems. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be fixing up this old dovetail saw. I come across a lot of saws like this, you can find them for very cheap, and they don't require a whole lot of work to get them cutting again. So in this video, if you follow along, you should be able to learn how to restore these saws and add them to your collection. I'm also making a TikTok video show. I'm also making a TikTok of this on my phone and this is the setup we have holding the phone in place. The first thing you're going to want to do when restoring most saws is remove the handle from the blade and normally you'll just use a flathead screwdriver to remove them screws there. However, the older saws have kind of unusual screws like that. So what I've had to do here is modify this cabinet maker screwdriver. You can see there now with a the file, I've modified the end there. So we can just drop that fella in there and get those screws out. Of course then to reduce a bit of friction we're going to use WD-40. Once we have the top pins out I'm going to hold this fella over this bench dog hole here and just grab a flathead screwdriver and just tap them fellas on through to the other side. So yeah, once we have them fellas coming up the other side, we can just use our fingers there to get them the whole way through. With the screws out, the handles should just pull off nice and clean. So I want to remove the blade from the brass back here, and I've never actually done this before, but I've read that if you lock it in the vise like this, and just grab a mallet, they should just kind of come off. There we have it. So as we're... So the whole time as we're sending, I like to come along with the tissue here and see how much progress we've made. So no, I still have a good bit of work to do to get this fella down. So with just some WD-40 and 120 grit sandpaper, we have it looking fairly good. I do have some 240 grit and 400 grit. I'm just gonna use to sand it down a small bit more, just to kind of remove some of the scratchiness left behind from the 120 grit. So now that we have the blade looking fairly well, we're just gonna repeat the exact same process with the brass back here. Now, I really like cleaning up brass. If you leave it for a while, it kind of builds up this kind of dark patina over it, but when you sand the top layer of that down, you get this really nice, shiny, golden looking color that I really like. And just like that, lads, we have it looking nice and clean once more. We can see there now as well, the stamp is a lot more visible. And this saw was made by a crowd called Cowell and Chapman from Newcastle. They're warranted cast steel. So I'm very happy with how the blade and the back turned out. I still need to sharpen this guy in a minute, but for now, we're going to move on to the handle. But before I do any work on the wooden handle, I'm going to fix up the screws first by just taking some 400 grit sandpaper again and just kind of twisting them into it. And again, removing that patina and bringing out that nice shiny brass look. It takes about two seconds each and they all look a lot better. Now I don't want to remove the dents or scratches because it's an old saw and I think they're part of the story. They add character so I'm going straight in with 400 grit sandpaper and we're just going to give it a light sanding the whole way around. Once we have it fairly well sanded it's time for a kiss off Lindsay Doyle. So we'll just get a drop on there and lather it all in. Now this wood probably hasn't been oiled in decades, so it's thirsty. You can already see it just absorbing all that oil. So I'm very happy with how that handle turned out. And before we can put the whole thing back together, I've had to put the blade into my vise here and grab my triangular file. Now this saw isn't actually too blunt, but before I put any saw back together, it's good to just sharpen it while the blade is out of the back. So we have our triangular file here and we're just gonna try and match the angles that are already there. And just give every single tooth a nice quick sharpen. Once the handle's all cleaned up, it's time to put the thing back together. So we'll start now by just attaching the handle onto the blade and we'll put this on after. Put our modified screwdriver back to use.
Once we're done messing around, we can tap the back back on. Now we can see it's looking a bit skewed. It's thicker down here than it is here. Some people like that design, I don't. So what I'm gonna do is come along and see if I can use my screwdriver here to prise this back up a bit. So here we have it lads, looking absolutely gorgeous and cutting fantastic, but it's not much good just testing it out on a random piece of wood. We're gonna go home now and cut some dovetails. This fella here is the last dovetail box I made, um, and I did it using a gent saw. Now a gent saw, for anyone wondering, looks like this. Very similar saw, except the handle is just turned like that. It's far less comfortable than the nice pistol grip on this one here. Um, so yeah, it took quite some time, but I got them all done, cut by hand. Uh, so we'll see how this fella performs. So we're back at base now, and for anyone wondering why we were working in the other workshop earlier, here's why. The place at home is a complete and utter mess, and uh, I just need to get around to tidying it all up. So this is our workspace at the minute. Here's the box of dovetail tools I had down the other shop with me. The reason I moved it back up is because I didn't have any timber down the other shop, but I think we're going to try use these oak boards and dovetail them at the edges here once I've shifted everything to the side. Instead of wasting those big boards of oak, I found some chestnut. So I said I'd cut off a small length of that and use it instead of wasting the larger boards that are harder to come by. But we're just going to start our dovetails by measuring the thickness of each board and then scribing that along the end of the other boards. Next up, I'm just gonna use two sets of dividers here just to mark out our dovetails. Then we'll just use our sliding bevel here and our marking knife to mark out our dovetails. Now, so we have them all marked out and it's finally time to start cutting them. So I'm gonna put the sliding bevel in the vise real quick and kind of match the angle so that when we're cutting with the saw, we're gonna be cutting straight down. So we'll just get the saw out here now. Line ourselves up very so carefully. Just cut my finger there, but I don't think we drew blood, so we'll keep going. And there we have it, a nice, straight, clean cut all the way along the line, we'll keep going. So I have them all cut out now, we can see there, I use the saw to take the sides off. And now we're just kind of coming along with our chisel and trying to remove the gaps where the pins will go in. I left my uh, coping saw down in the other workshop and as much as I chat badly about the coping saw, it'd certainly be handy to have right now. So I put the dovetails on top here and I'm after marking out my pins. Uh, so now we're just gonna come along with the dovetail saw again and cut down to the line. I'm after messing up on one of the pins, but we'll drive them home anyway and see how they turn out. So I'm fairly happy with them all, but on this particular pin here, I cut on the wrong side. So the kerf the saw made sits in there instead of here. But aside from shoddy joinery, um, suffice to say, this saw has done a fantastic job. And I really hope the guy who owns it will let me buy it off him after restoring it. Because I don't know, can I ever go back to using the turned handle on a gent saw again. The pistol grip on this is just so much more comfortable. The way the like horn just hugs your hand, it's a very comfortable, effective saw. Other than that, thanks so for watching and we'll talk to you all again. Good luck.